Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Julie and today we are going to be working on some projects around my house. One of the good things about being a YouTuber is when you start a project on camera, you have to finish it. So with y'all help today, I'm going to finish some projects that I have been putting off. It's going to be fun. Let's get to work. We have a lot to do. Oh, and there is a giveaway in this video. So stay tuned for that. I thrifted this metal sewing base for $6 and the same day I thrifted this sign and I put it on top of the metal base and it kind of is acting as a tray top and I love it and this is what we've been using. But now it's time to make a permanent solution for what is going to be the nightstands in my master and I thrifted another one. I paid $30 for this one. So I'm into this pair of nightstands, $36 right now. So we're gonna get going and make a tray top for both of these nightstands. I have half inch, no, I'm sorry, quarter inch plywood that I'm going to be cutting down. Now I'm using what I have, but half inch plywood I think would have been much better for this. I also want the top that I am creating to be a little bit bigger than the current piece that is on there. So the measurements for the top is going to be three feet long, so 32 inches long and 16 inches wide. So right now I'm just cutting down my quarter inch plywood to those measurements using my table saw. When I am creating a custom one of a kind piece, I like to put it together throughout the process. That way I can make sure the measurements are right and it is looking the way that I want it to look. Now that I know that the sizing on the plywood is perfect, I'm just going to sand it down using 220 grit paint sandpaper and my orbital sander. Now we are ready to create the frame of the tree. I have this old piece of decking that was given to me and I really like how the sides of this wood is already rounded. So using my table saw, I'm going to cut two inches off one side, then turn it over and cut two inches off the other. And that is what I'll be using to create the frame of the tray that will be going on the metal base. If you watch my videos before, you know that I don't like to use a tape measure often. I much prefer to put my pieces together and mark them that way. So if you are tape me measure challenged like me, this is a great way to get accurate measurements. I got the two side pieces cut and I also cut two scrap pieces of wood because I need it to be thicker and have more support where it's going to be attaching to my metal base. This could be avoided if you just had half inch plywood, but I am all about just using what you have and making it work. Now that I have the two side pieces on, I am going to measure for the longer pieces. I have all the pieces cut, I've already sanded them down, and now I am ready to put this tray together. I'm measuring where to put the extra support pieces because I wanna make sure they are in the spot where the metal base will attach to my tray and then I am putting my plywood back in. So I'm gonna nail this whole piece together so I don't have to worry about trying to struggle to put the plywood in after. And I apologize because <laughs> as I can see now, y'all can't really see what I'm doing, but I have my brad nailer and I am just nailing the frame pieces together. Now I'm using my tape measure to find those support pieces and I'm going to nail my frame to these support pieces. I just didn't want to nail into the plywood and risk a nail popping up that would have just been very upsetting to me. So I decided to do it this way. Then I turned it over and using some very small nails, I attached the plywood top to the support pieces. Again, all of this isn't necessary if you use half inch plywood. Now that the tray is all together, it is ready for a paint job. Of course, I wanna go with an antique aged look. So I am using my Waverly Antiquing Wax just mixed with some water and I'm going to apply it to all the pieces of the wood. This will just bring the whole look together. The walls of my bedroom are white. So I think this look will pair nicely with my warm white walls and also the wrought iron metal base. To seal this piece, I'm going to be using Waverly varnish in a matte finish. If you've seen this on the shelf and you've wondered how it differs from the wax, well, let me tell you the difference. I really like this varnish. 
I would compare it to like a polyacrylic min wax, except I find it's much easier to use in a min wax. You just put on one coat or two, however many coats you want of it, and then you just leave it. So it's not like the wax where you have to wipe it on, then wipe it off and buff it. This you just put on. It has a little bit of a shine, definitely more than the wax, but I really like it. I think this is going to be my new go-to sealer. I am so excited about how these nightstands turned out. I think the natural rustic wood pairs nicely with the wrought iron metal bases and I think it goes really well with the look that I am going for in my master. I love that I have these two unique nightstands that no one else will have and I think going bigger with the top was definitely a good call. It fits much better in the space. This is the sign that we are previously using as the nightstand and it is the perfect size for the girls bathroom where I really wanted to put a piece of art. My original plan for this sign was just to paint the background and put a quote on it. But I went, when I started sanding it, I realized all the words were coming off. So if you have a sign like this, the words do come off with some sandpaper and you're left with a nice white background. However, after I got everything sanded off, it was just looking a little boring to me. So I just decided to go in a completely different direction than what my original plan was for this piece. You should always stay open to letting your ideas evolve as you are creating a project. I wanted to make the gray frame brown, so I'm going to add the Waverly Antiquing Wax, just the wax, no water, anything else, and I'm also not going to wipe it off. And I'm also going to put a little bit on to the piece. That way you'll see later on, just in case anything shows, it'll be brown instead of white. I want to create some texture on this piece. So my go-to is to use drop cloth. Y'all know I love using drop cloth and just sprinkling it throughout my house. So I'm just going to cut the piece of drop cloth to the size of the sign kind of like I did or exactly like I did for that little bath sign if y'all remember that I created for the same bathroom a few weeks ago. Once my drop cloth is cut out I'm just going to simply hot glue it to the piece. I'm only going to be hot gluing the edges because I don't want any hot glue ridges or texture in the middle of my piece. So did y'all know that you could use IOD transfers on fabric? I personally have never done it, but we're gonna do it together right now on this video. This is a transfer I decided to use because it has some very pretty botanicals. I'm not gonna use the whole transfer. I'm actually only gonna use three sprigs out of this one, so I will have plenty left over. When using a transfer, I like to start with a piece that I know for sure that I want to use. So I want this beautiful rose to be right in the center of my piece. So I'm gonna cut out all the pieces to go with this rose and then I'm gonna figure out which ones I want to add next. Once I have it all laid out, I'm ready to start transferring the images. I like to use painter's tape to keep my transfer in place. It was definitely a little more challenging to transfer onto cloth, but as I did a few pieces, I learned that if you do the edges first and then start to pull up on the transfer, it comes off a lot faster. And y'all, I cannot believe how good this looks. Okay, I now need to start using transfers on fabric and I'm thinking with the pieces I have left from this transfer that would make some really pretty pillows. This particular stem was too long for this piece so all I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the top with the floral first and then I'm going to adjust the bottom to fit my artwork. And that's the great thing about transfers is you can change them up, you can split them up, like you don't have to use the whole piece if you don't want, you can use it for multiple projects. And lucky for y'all, I have an extra one of these transfers. So I'm gonna be doing a giveaway for this particular transfer. To be entered into this giveaway, all you need to do is comment like and share this video in the first 24 hours after it being posted 
and I will announce the winner of the giveaway on the Julie's Designs and Signs Facebook page and the YouTube community page. I am so glad that I did not allow myself to get stuck on the original idea I had for this piece because I think the way it came out fits the bathroom so much better. I love drop cloth, I love botanicals, I love IOD transfers, and this piece came out so much better than I even imagined. I love this little vanity bench that I thrifted for literally pennies, but I've been putting off this project because it did not come with a seed base and I know that it's going to be kind of difficult to cut one, but we're going to tackle it together in this video. I'm going to start by cutting out the back first. So I am just measuring and marking where I need to cut out a little notch so that the board fits back into the seat. All right, y'all, I did it. It fit perfectly. And also remember to leave a little bit of extra space so that you have room for batting and fabric. Now to figure out the rest of the cuts, the easiest thing to do would be to turn this over and trace it, but I don't want my board to move. So I'm just gonna put two finishing nails in that will be easy to remove, but it'll keep it in place when I turn this over. And now I'm just gonna go around with a pencil and trace the outline of the seat. It was really easy to remove the plywood and to pull the nails out and it did not create any damage. And now I have my outline to go cut out my seat. I'm gonna use my jigsaw to cut out in between the two lines and that should be the perfect size to fit on this seat. Wow, y'all, I cannot believe it. It fit perfectly. This project definitely was not as hard as I thought it was going to be. To upholster the seat, I am going to be using this $3.99 scatter rug from Ikea. I absolutely love this rug. The texture, the color is just totally my style. And I'm also going to be using some polyfill batting. I believe it's like $5 at Walmart and I only used a small amount of it. I'm going to cut out the batting to the size that I need. Then I'm going to put it on top of my rug. And then I'm just going to start pulling it all over the underneath of the plywood and stapling it down using my hand stapler. And I'm gonna keep turning it over because this rug has a lot of lines. So I wanna keep checking to make sure all my lines are even. And then I realized I needed to cut off the fringe. So I would definitely recommend doing that at the beginning and we'll be saving that because maybe I'll use it on another project. For the corners, I just do them to the best of my ability. I try to remove any excess fabric I don't need so it's not bulky. So just do the best you can, use lots of staples and cut off any excess you have. Once I'm finished upholstering my fabric seat, I am going to attach it to the wooden base. This project was so much easier than I thought it was going to be. And the texture on this fabric pairs perfectly with this beautiful aged wooden base. How many of y'all thought I was going to paint this? Oh no, not when wood is this gorgeous and this aged, we do not touch it. I haven't decided where I'm gonna put it on my house, but I do think it looks very cute right here in front of my window. Now we're gonna move on to my dining room and create some custom curtains for this space. I grabbed this drop cloth from Walmart and hung it up and it does go across the whole window. However, I'm not loving the ruffle. It's just a little bit too shabby chic for me, but I love the look of the drop cloth. These are the drop cloths that I purchased from Walmart. They are around $10 and I have three windows that I need to make curtains for. I decided to wash my drop cloths, which I don't normally do, but since I was cutting these to a custom size, I wanted to make sure they were pre-shrunk in case I ever had to wash them again. You know, I do have four kids. They definitely will be putting their dirty fingers on my curtains. <laughs> like I said, this was my first time washing drop cloth and I did have to put it through the dryer several times, cleaning out the filter several times as well because it did shed and peel a lot. So now I am folding my drop cloth in half so I can turn one drop cloth into two panels. As you saw in the first clip, um, one drop cloth 
thoroughly covered the window, but I need two panels. Windows need two panels. If you are one of those people that do one window panel and put it on the side, I am sorry. We cannot be friends. I cannot deal with that. Windows need two panels. I am just cutting off the excess drop cloth that I do not need. I need this panel to be 88 and a half inches and you can see how much it shrunk. So if you liked the ruffle curtains in the first clip, I would suggest not washing your drop cloth so you have a nice pretty ruffle. So I'm just cutting my drop cloth right down the middle so I can turn this one drop cloth into two panels and I'm gonna do this for all three of my drop cloths. Now we're gonna add some one and a half inch rod clips. Um, this is a pack of 100 that I ordered off of Amazon. I think it was $26. I'll put a link in the description, but these are perfect. You don't have to sew or do anything. You just clip them right to the top. And I personally think they make curtains look very high end. To add the clips, I always start on the ends, then I fold my curtain in half and put a clip in the middle, and then I fold it in half again and put it in the middle of that, and that's how I keep them evenly spaced out. And I also like to pleat my curtains when I'm clipping them. So you just kind of fold them over and then clip it. I hope this makes sense, but you'll kind of see in the final video, I'll do a close up of it. And I wouldn't worry too much about the pleat. You just wanna fold it over and clip it. And if the pleat is going the wrong way or something, that's very easy to fix once you have the curtains hung up. So right now, you're just trying to get the placement by folding it over in half. You could also measure, but I find this is very easy. Once all your clips are in place, it is ready to be hung up. I got these simple black curtain rods from Ikea. And the side that I cut, the more distressed looking side, I always put that one towards the outside so it won't be as noticeable. I love how these curtain panels came out. They are exactly what I wanted and I personally think they look so high end. You cannot beat $30 for six curtain panels. I have not decorated my mantle. I just have stuff up from last week's video, but I have been working very hard on this dining room. I'll go ahead and put a before clip of what this space looked like. I just want to say thank y'all for loving my YouTube channel and supporting me. If I am ever having a bad day, all I need to go do is read all the sweet comments that y'all leave for me. Y'all are so supportive. I have been doing this for about two years and I have almost 50,000 subscribers. That is so, so exciting. I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. Please let me know what was your favorite project that I created today and do you see yourself creating any of these projects for your own home and don't forget to leave a comment below so you can be entered into the iod transfer giveaway y'all have a wonderful day and i will see y'all in the next video